Come gather round the campfire and hear our ghostly tales of chilling terrors, darkest woes, and anything that goes bump in the night. So cuddle up with your best friend or dare it alone. The darkness is closing in and spirits are calling your name. This is Fireside Phantoms. So we, we are doing the Brothers Grimm version of fairy tales, correct? So um, yes. this is the story of Rapunzel by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm, or the Brothers Grimm as we know them, with several, several liberties, exaggerations, and blatant lies as made up by me. Yes, I love <laughs> it. You know, I'm not as familiar with this one. I know it's a famous one. All yeah. I can remember is Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. That's right. That's my favorite line. That's right. I'm glad you're going to um, do that part because I think I actually forgot to include it. Oh, th the I mean, famous it's, line. It's in there. <laughs> it's in there, but it's not done with the, the same level of, of zest. Zest and, and love that's and in your voice. Yeah. Vigor. Yeah, the vigor. Then and, bigger. Uh, yeah. So I think that you should, whenever it needs to be said, I'll just look at you and you can say it. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I actually have a part in this. This is great. Yay. Okay. So the story is dark and it starts out like many other tales that you would have seen on such hit TV shows, such as Fear Thy Neighbor or Neighborhood Wars. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love it already. <laughs> Which, Fear Thy Neighbor, if you've never seen, you should check that shit out. It is terrifying, and they're all true stories, and it's crazy. The story of Rapunzel begins with the young and madly in love couple June and Joseph Hamburger. Their names have been changed to protect their identities. Hamburger. Hamburger. And... <laughs> <laughs> Remember how I said there were blatant lies included in this story. <laughs> um, the hamburgers lived out in the countryside on a little farm where they had goats, chickens, cows, and cats. Mystical cats. The hamburgers loved to tend to their garden and grew every kind of plant, vegetable, and flower you could ever imagine. I like them. Mm -hmm. The yard bloomed with every kind of indigenous plant they could find except for one, Rampion. Now, from Wikipedia... Campanula rapunculus, common name is Rampion bellflower, Rampion, Roar bellflower, or Rapunzel. It is a flower known to grow all over Europe and is used in salads. The leaves are used like a spinach and the roots like a radish. So the hamburgers were searching high and low for some Rampion or Rapunzel for their garden. As you see, the hamburgers were strict vegetarians and never touched meat. So they lived in Portland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they had heard that Rapunzel was the most delicious thing you could ever add to a salad, so they were desperate to find some, but to no avail. There was no Rapunzel. Um, they would go on overnight hiking trips deep into the mountains, seeking out Rapunzel plants to dig up and bring back to their garden, but each trek ended in disappointment. There was no Rapunzel to be found, so their garden sat incomplete, waiting for the day when a Rapunzel plant could grow and make their world perfect. Aww. I just thought the it's name... It's very sad already. I thought the name Hamburger was ironic because yeah. they're vegetarians. They're vegetarians. <laughs> that's, right. yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Then one day, the Hamburgers noticed that the lights were on in the abandoned creepy cottage next door. They peeked over the very tall wall that separated them from their neighbor and saw a big moving van in the driveway called the Big Bad Wolf Moving Company. <laughs> <laughs> they nervously looked at each other and secretly wondered who had bought that major fixer-upper next door. <laughs> As they peeped over the wall, they saw the wolves bringing in several strange pieces of furniture. A birdcage full of mice, a trombone, a crystal ball, a taxi drumming flying monkey, some <laughs> goblets foaming with green smoke, a record player with a complete set of Neil Diamond's greatest hits on vinyl, <laughs> some Martha Stewart dishware, a pottery bar mahogany round dining table, Ooh. some crochet needles. I think I've seen that. It's a nice <laughs> dining room it table. Is, it is. This is my dream list, by no, the way. Oh. Um, a black steamer trunk, a few large dream catchers, some nice stained glass lamps from Cost Plus World Marketplace, and a red velvet throne chair complete with a red velvet foot ottoman. 
Again, the hamburgers didn't know what to make of this strange new neighbor. First of all, her home decor taste was awesome. But <laughs> why would someone with such great taste want to live in that dump of a house? They shrugged their shoulders and went back to tending their garden. So then one day, June told Joseph that she wanted to have a baby. Joseph agreed to the idea, and the two of them began trying to start a family. However, as much as they tried, June could not conceive. They continued to try for months and months, and to no effect. There was no baby. June was starting to become quite depressed and wondering if she would ever be a mother. It will be okay, Joseph said while stroking June's floor-length and possibly long blonde hair, but June wasn't so sure. A few days later, June went for a walk down the dirt road she lived on when she came across an old woman wandering up the road on the other side of the street. Beautiful day, she called out to the stranger. The old woman just smiled dimly and clutched her black hooded cloak tight to her. That's hmm. odd, thought June. It's like 105 degrees out today and that woman is cold. Maybe she's sick. I should check and see. Are you feeling okay, ma'am? She asked. The old woman just looked at her and smiled. Well, yes, dearie, I am. Why do you ask? Well, you were all bundled up on such a warm day. Oh, when you get to be my age, you're cold all the time, my dear. Oh, well, okay then, June replied. She started to continue on her way when the old woman's words stopped her again. Why, my dear, you're out here all alone. Do you have no young children to tend to? June sighed heavily and turned back to the old woman and put on her bravest smile. Well, no, I'm afraid not, June replied. Well, whatever are you waiting for, my dear? It's not for a lack of trying. I just haven't been able to conceive. The old woman sat quietly for some time while she pondered this new information. Pondering, pondering. Hmm. That's too bad. <laughs> terrible yeah i know yeah, something's wrong with your man i think <laughs> i know it's been tough replied june you know i remember when my sister was trying to have her first baby she struggled too to become pregnant the thing that finally cured her of her infertility was rampion yes i remember it well that's what she did she ate some delicious Rapunzel, and it cured her right quick. She became pregnant soon, and she ate some more. Maybe you should try that. June's heart leaped at the idea, but then she remembered that there was no Rapunzel anywhere to be found. Oh, said June, well, I would love to try that, but I have no idea where to find any Rapunzel. Do you? The old lady was quiet again, and finally, after a long pause, she said, No. And now leave me alone, I'm going home. This answer annoyed the hell out of June, but she smiled sweetly at the old lady anyway and thanked her for her advice. June turned back around and headed home, hoping that the old woman didn't see the look of frustration on her face. A few nights later, June and Joseph were lying in bed. The moon was full and the light was streaming into their bedroom, hitting June squarely in the face. She could not sleep. She tossed and turned as her mind raced with thoughts of the old woman, the elusive Rapunzel plant, and her frustrations over not being pregnant yet. Next to her, Joseph slept soundly. Finally, June couldn't take it anymore. She got up and started pacing around the room. As her anxiety and racing thoughts sped up, June became very, very hot and went to the bedroom window and threw it open. As she leaned on the windowsill and let the cool breeze flutter through her very, very, very long and thick hair, she let her gaze flutter down around her yard. You see, June's bedroom was on the second floor of her spacious three-story, two-bathroom, colonial <laughs> home with wooden shutters and thatched branch roof, so she had a clear view of her garden and a clear view of the neighbor's yard on the other side of the wall. As she let her curious eyes wander, she couldn't help but flick them over to her mysterious new neighbor's yard. Mm. Now, she and Joseph had not met the neighbor yet, but the rumors were wild all over fairy tale land. Apparently, the scuttlebutt was this new neighbor was a single woman, childless, several cats, heavy drinker, most likely <laughs> a wicked enchantress, <laughs> cold, very powerful, and mean. She didn't have any friends and essentially lived her life as a recluse. It is believed that she once did have a family, but lost them in a terrible accident. Ever since then, she has shut herself away from the rest of the world. 
Mm. June and Joseph had heard the rumors, so they decided not to bother their new neighbor, figuring she just wanted to be left alone. But on this night, as June settled her gaze on her neighbor's yard, she saw the most amazing thing. The most beautiful, incredibly fantastical, amazing thing. She saw, Carol? <gasps> Rapunzel! That's right! A perfect bed of fresh green Rapunzel growing strong and perfect in the moonlight. Oh my god! June's heart leapt as she explained. Her boisterous expression awoke Joseph from his slumber. What was going on? He slurred. Joseph, come here. You do it drunk really well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Joseph, come here. You're never going to believe this, cried June. Joseph slowly rolled out of bed and stumbled over to the window. Look, June said while pointing at the rampion. Joseph rubbed the sleep out of his eyes and tried to focus on what June was pointing at. Huh? He said. Look, June practically screamed. Joseph was finally able to focus well enough to see the Rapunzel growing in the moonlight of his neighbor's yard. Oh, wow, he said. Is that, is that, searching for the word, Rapunzel, screamed June. Rapunzel. <laughs> Rapunzel. Joseph, I have to get some of that Rapunzel. I met this old woman on the road, and she told me that if I eat some, I'll be able to get pregnant. I have to try it. Joseph listened to his wife and let her words sink in. But that means we have to go talk to that evil enchantress next door. Do you think she would let us have some? Asked Joseph. I'm not going to ask her anything, says June. Uh-oh. She has never once talked to us, and she clearly wants to be left alone. I want you to sneak into <gasps> her yard and get some for me, June demanded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I'm sorry, you want me to what? Asked Joseph. You heard me, said June. If I can get my hands on some Rapunzel, then I can finally conceive. You have to do it, Joseph. If we are ever able to have a family, you've got to get me some of that Rapunzel. Joseph wasn't quite sure what to say to his wife, as neither of them really knew for sure if the Rapunzel would help them to conceive. Mm -hmm. He didn't say much. Yeah, you can't believe everything everybody <laughs> says. You can't believe everything on the internet. That's right. He didn't say much, hoping that it would all blow over in the morning, but it did not. The next day, June was on him. When do you think you'll go over there and get me some Rapunzel? How about tonight? I'll lay out all of your dark clothes. I have a flashlight you can use as well as some bear mace if you get caught. <laughs> you'll be fine, Joseph. Don't give me that look. Joseph was getting pretty annoyed with June, but every night he put her off and the next day her anger and frustration would grow. She started to become obsessed and would sit up in their bedroom staring down at the Rapunzel every day. Eventually, June stopped eating altogether. If you don't love me enough to get me some Rapunzel, then I might as well die, she told Joseph. Oh, so dramatic. So dramatic. She was so angry and depressed, she took some scissors and cut off her <gasps> hair, which she had woven into a long braid, and left it on the floor. Joseph started to become distraught and realized that he was going to have to get the Rapunzel or his wife was going to die of starvation. Finally, he acquiesced. That night, he dressed in dark clothes he picked up June's long braid that she had cut off and wrapped it around his waist. Then he crept along the edge of his house, slinked across the yard until he reached the tall wall between his house and the evil enchantress's house. He made a lasso with the braid and then launched it over the wall, hoping to grab some kind of anchor on the other side. He did this several times until he felt it latch onto something sturdy. He then tightened the hair rope and used it to help him scale over the large rock wall that divided their properties. Once on the ground, he slinked and slithered to the Garden of Rapunzel. I keep picturing um, the Grinch. <laughs> when he's <laughs> Very sneaky, sneaky. around the Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He removed his garden shears, and before he cut the first plant, he glanced back at the old broken-down cottage. He could see some dim lights on the inside, and he could hear the Neil Diamond record playing on the record player. Somebody's partying. He pictured the Enchantress passed out on the couch. He smiled as he knew the music provided him a sound buffer from being caught. So he went to work. He snipped off one plant, two plants, three plants, four. Little greedy there. Yeah. He put them in his knapsack, slung over his shoulder. Just as he cut the last of the Rapunzel plants, he heard a voice behind him. What the hell do you think you're doing? Joseph jumped a mile high. <laughs> he stumbled and he fell to the ground and then turned and let his gaze travel up the tall woman standing in front of him. She was wearing a long black gown that trailed on the grass behind her. 
She donned a widow's cap that had long black tulle veiling her pale face and long black hair. She wore black lace fingerless gloves. Joseph saw that her fingers were long and bony that concluded at sharp pointed ends. She was seating at Joseph. Please, said Joseph, it's for my wife. She is desperate for some of your Rapunzel. She won't eat anything until she gets some. Please take mercy on me. Why, pray tell, does she want my Rapunzel? asked the enchantress. She just wants it, Joseph explained. She thinks it will help her conceit. With this statement, the enchantress softened and shifted her weight. Conceive, she said. Joseph nodded. She sat and thought for a moment and then finally said, Okay, you can take it to her, but on one condition. Yes, I'll do it. Anything you want, pleaded Joseph. You can take the Rapunzel to your wife, but you must give me your first child when it is born. Joseph thought this was kind of a high price to pay for the Rapunzel, so he said, um, okay, what if I don't agree with that? The enchantress smiled coldly. She opened her mouth and revealed a set of razor-sharp teeth and a long, twisted tongue that slinked out of her mouth and started to curl itself around Joseph's leg, tightening as it went. Okay, okay, I agree, screamed Joseph, afraid for his life. Very well, said the en well, or... The, oh, so the enchantress clasping her hands together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> because her tongue is wrapped around oh, his leg. So she so said, mm -hmm. I wrote she said very well, but what she probably said was, well, because her tongue can't really <laughs> enunciate. So the enchantress says she clasped her hands together. She released Joseph from her tongue grip. He sprang to his feet and ran all the way back to his home with a bag of Rapunzel. In the morning when she awoke, June was surrounded by the beautiful Rapunzel she had so coveted. Her eyes filled with tears as she looked at Joseph. Joseph was relieved as she tore into the Rapunzel, devouring it like a horse who hadn't eaten for weeks. Because let's face it, she hadn't eaten for weeks. A few weeks after getting the Rapunzel, June fell pregnant with a baby girl. She and Joseph were thrilled and they started to prepare a nursery. But Joseph knew the baby wasn't going to be theirs to keep, and sure enough, on the night their baby was born, the enchantress showed up on their doorstep with her arms outstretched. Joseph reluctantly picked up the baby and handed it to her. She silently nodded at him and turned and walked away. Wow. Okay. That must be hard to do that. I know. Part two. Oh. <laughs> Part, okay. <laughs> this is where Yes, I'm, we go I'm on the edge of my yes, seat. Yes. I can't wait to hear what happens. There we go. So the enchantress took the baby girl, whom she appropriately named Rapunzel, okay. and whisked her away to another part of fairy tale land far away from her biological parents. She raised Rapunzel in the enchanted forest where Rapunzel grew like a weed. Mm. She and the enchantress would eat the berries in the forest, swim in the rivers, and play with the forest animals. Rapunzel loved her upbringing, but there was just one thing. She knew that her quote-unquote mother was quite strange. She couldn't put her finger on it, but there was definitely something off about her. For one thing, she seemed to be too old to be a mother. She had super creepy teeth, mm -hmm. and when she walked, she made a weird crickety sound like a door creaking in a haunted house. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever it was, it didn't stop Rapunzel from having a happy childhood. Then one day, when Rapunzel was about 15, she and the Enchantress were walking through the woods when they came across a young man on his horse. The three stopped to chat about the weather when the Enchantress realized that Rapunzel was blushing and batting her eyes at the prince. <laughs> he, in turn, was staring at Rapunzel and smiling widely. The Enchantress realized that her baby girl was growing up and would soon want to leave the Enchantress for good. Aww. Oh, hell no, thought the Enchantress. <laughs> Rapunzel is mine. So that night, while Rapunzel slept, the Enchantress went to work. She built a very tall stone tower. It was impossibly tall, reaching way up into the clouds. She built no doors, no stairs, no elevators or escalators, nothing. The only thing the tower had was a single bedroom clear at the tippy top with one window to look out of. In the morning, the enchantress told Rapunzel that she had something to show her. She took Rapunzel to the tower and told her there was only one way to get up there. They would have to use Rapunzel's very long, thick hair, which happened to be miles and miles long, as rope to climb up and see what was inside the tower. Mm. The enchantress brushed and brushed Rapunzel's hair and tied it into one very long braid. 
Then she beckoned an owl to fly down and grab the end of the braid. The owl flew up to the top of the tower where the bedroom window was. It flew into the room and tied the end of the hair to the bedpost for a bed that the witch had placed in the tower. Then Rapunzel and the enchantress used Rapunzel's hair to scale up the side of the tower and into the bedroom. Once they arrived, Rapunzel was confused. Um, okay, so why are we here? She asked. No, Rapunzel, you should have asked that question before you climbed up the I tower. I think that the enchantress said there's candy up there. Oh, or oh yes, okay. that'll do it. So her quote-unquote mother explained that the world was a dangerous and scary place. Mm -hmm. And in order to protect Rapunzel, she would need to make sure she would never be hurt. So she needed to keep Rapunzel in the tower for her own safety. Don't worry, the enchantress said. I'll bring you food each and every day. I will call out to you from down below and you will drop down your hair and I will climb up with your food. Trust me, Rapunzel, this is for the best. Rapunzel was not pleased. Mother, no, I can't be locked up in here in this tower. This is ludicrous. I've got friends out here. Um, I got a party this week I'm going to go to. I text a lot. I would say, look, Rapunzel, you're spoiled. You have your own room. Do you know how rare that is? <laughs> Most See? kids have to share a room That's growing right. up. You get your own spot. You should be happy. Her mother replied, what about all the dangers out there in the world, Rapunzel? I told you about the big bad wolf, the trolls that live under the bridge, those creepy smurfs, yeah. those devious red cap fairies. Yes, and we those, know about that. Those hilarious and obscene kids from South Park. What's the big fucking deal, bitch? Yeah. <laughs> then the enchantress got real quiet and said, I've never told you this, but I did have another family before you. And because I was not careful and I did not protect them, they were killed. <gasps> I cannot let that happen to you. This in turn quieted Rapunzel, and finally, feeling empathy for her mother, she agreed to stay. Very well, the enchantress said. I will go now, but I'll be back tomorrow, and I'll bring some fresh food for you to eat. And with that, Rapunzel let down her hair, and her mother climbed down. Rapunzel stayed in the tower, and each night her mother would come and say, Rapunzel! Rapunzel, let down your hair! And Rapunzel would lower her hair, and her mother would climb up. Rapunzel, however, was quite depressed and very lonely. She sat in the tower for years, singing to herself to pass the time. Then one day, a man riding by on his horse heard Rapunzel's beautiful voice as she sang and wondered how he could get up. <laughs> yeah. And wondered how he would be able to get up into that tower to see her. He checked all around but found no doors, no staircases, no elevators or escalators. How on earth can I get up into that window, he thought. He could only sit on the ground and listen to her sing, but he couldn't actually see her. Then, one night, he saw the enchantress appear, and the enchantress said, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. He hid behind the tree and watched her, and he saw her say that. After the enchantress would say that, a very long bushy braid would suddenly cascade down the tower face like a waterfall, and the witch would grab hold of it and go up the side of the tower using it as a rope. He waited for the old witch to leave, and after she was gone, he too called up to Rapunzel to let down her long hair. Rapunzel! Rapunzel! Let down your hair! Rapunzel did, assuming it was her mother coming back. But when the man got to the window and jumped into her the room, Rapunzel was shocked. How did you, where are you, uh, she gasped. I am a handsome prince, he said. <laughs> I heard your beautiful singing and I just had to come and see who you are. You are so beautiful. What is your name? Rapunzel didn't know quite what to make of this. So she stared, R R R Rapunzel, just like the plant, he said. Mm, yeah, I guess. The prince sat down. I'm sorry to upset you, Miss Rapunzel. I just had to meet you. Do you mind if I sit and talk a while? Rapunzel was totally down for this. The only person she had seen for three years was her mother, and she was dying for someone else to talk to. <laughs> Poor so, thing. <laughs> Sounds like most people during COVID. Right. So she agreed, and she and the prince sat down to talk. Thereafter, each night, after the enchantress would leave, the prince would come to the tower. Rapunzel would let down her hair, and he would come up and talk with her. Eventually, and you know where this is headed, mm -hmm. they fell in love. Aww. The prince proposed to Rapunzel, and she enthusiastically agreed to become his wife. They were both very excited for their future together, but there was just one problem. 
How on earth were they going to get Rapunzel out of the tower? Rapunzel decided it was time to man up and come clean to her mother about her fiancé. So one day, before her mother arrived, she had the prince come up into her room. She hid him behind some curtains in the corner and waited for her mother to show up. When the enchantress appeared, Rapunzel put on her warmest smile to greet her. Hello, mother, she said. Well, hello, Rapunzel. How are you? I'm good. Mother, please take a seat. I have something I want to share with you. The enchantress removed her hat and sat down on the bed. Mother, I'm so excited. I've met someone. The enchantress looked at her suspiciously. Rapunzel, uh, that's not possible. All you do is sit in this room. There is no one for you to meet. I made <laughs> sure of that, remember? Yes, but mother, he figured out how to get up here. Now she had her mother's attention. What? Yes, in fact, he is here now, said Rapunzel. And with that, the prince stepped out from behind the curtains and walked over to the bed. His head Surprise! <laughs> his hand extended to shake hands with the enchantress. She recoiled in disgust. Rapunzel, this is not funny. What is going on? Mother, this is my handsome prince. He is going to marry me. The enchantress turned cold. Oh, no, he's not. You belong to me, Rapunzel, oh. not him. <laughs> and with that, the enchantress opened her mouth. No, and the her tongue. <laughs> long, twisted tongue slithered out between her razor sharp teeth. She suddenly started to shape shift. Her arms and legs started oh. to stretch longer and longer. Rapunzel could hear the bones breaking as they curled into themselves. Her eyes rolled back into her head, and her head turned from an oval shape to a round shape. Little hairs started to protrude from her skin, and two long fangs extended out of her mouth. A bright red dot appeared on her stomach. The enchantress had turned into a black widow spider. Oh, I was trying to figure that out. I'm mm -hmm. like, is it Shrek? No. <laughs> is it a Close. vampire? No. Close. Rapunzel screamed. The handsome prince stood in shock. That's so gross, he exclaimed. He's like, these genetics are not going to work <laughs> no. for baby making. I'm out of here. With that, the enchantress scampered out of the tower window. What are we going to do? Asked Rapunzel to the prince. How should I know? That was completely whack, said the prince. <laughs> Rapunzel and the prince ran to the window to see what the spider was doing. They were shocked. She was weaving spider webbing all over the tower wall. Sticky spider webbing spinning from her mouth, covering every inch of the tower. Finally, Ew. when she was done, she came back to the window. If you ever try to leave, Rapunzel, I will know. You will just get tangled up in my web like a fly. I will fill you in the web trying to break free. You will never, ever be able to leave here, ever. And you, she eyed the prince, the second you try to leave, you will get wrapped in my web and I will devour you whole. Ooh. With that, she flew out of the window and perched herself in the web on the other side of the tower so that the prince and Rapunzel could not see her. Well, that's fucked up, said the handsome prince to Rapunzel. Yeah, it kind of puts a damper on our <laughs> foreplay. <laughs> right? Okay, let's not panic, said Rapunzel. There must be some way out of here. The two thought and thought, but they couldn't come up with any ideas. Days turned to weeks, and the two just paced the floor, trying to come up with a plan. Finally, the prince said, Rapunzel, I have got to get out of here. I am starving to death. <laughs> Me too, she replied. Just then, Rapunzel saw a small house spider crawling along her wall. Oh, gross, a spider, she screamed. <laughs> she probably has spider PTSD. She probably does. The spider started weaving a web from one corner of the room to the next. The prince noticed a can of hairspray sitting on the table in the room and picked it up. The enchantress had bought tons of hairspray to keep Rapunzel's braid in place, so the room was covered in hairspray cans. He sprayed it on the spider and on the web. The spider fell to the floor dead, and the webbing fell apart. Clever. Oh, my God, said the prince. Can we use your hairspray to get out of this tower? So with that, they searched <laughs> the room for all the hairspray cans they could find. Then the two tied themselves together with Rapunzel's hair. Next, they tied all the sheets, towels, and well, maybe I got this in the wrong order. Because <laughs> I said next they tied all the sheets, towels, and curtains together that they could find and tied the other end of, to the bedpost to use as a rope to lower themselves down. And then they tied themselves with Rapunzel's hair. Okay, gotcha. Are you ready, said the prince. As ready as I'll ever be, said Rapunzel. And with that, the two stepped out onto the webbing. The prince lowered them down as Rapunzel sprayed the webbing. The webbing would drop away as they moved down the surface. As they very slowly and carefully made their way down the face of the tower, the breaking apart of the web awoke the enchantress, and she descended on them in spider form. 
As the enchantress approached them, she slithered her creepy, twisted tongue out of her mouth and over towards the couple. No! Go, Rapunzel! Faster! Faster! <laughs> faster! Rapunzel and the prince were so caught up in what they were doing, they didn't even notice that her tongue had begun to wind around them. And then suddenly they saw her, mouth wide, tongue wrapping tighter and tighter. Keep lowering us down, screamed Rapunzel. I'll deal with her. Rapunzel started spraying her mother with the hairspray. It didn't stop her mother, and she continued to wrap them tighter and tighter and bring them closer <laughs> to her razor-sharp teeth. Oh. Finally, when they were close enough to touch, Rapunzel screamed at her mother, Mother, you have to let me go. I don't want to be here anymore. I'm 18 now. <laughs> I'm 18. I'm you an adult. You have no law over me That's right. anymore. No more. The evil enchantress, however, had hardened her heart towards Rapunzel and refused to listen. Finally, Rapunzel gave up trying to talk to her mother. She pulled and pulled until she freed one hand from her mother's tongue grasp. In her hand, she produced a pair of scissors. Her mother's eyes grew wide with fear. Rapunzel used the scissors to cut off her mother's tongue. It's always the scissors always in these the scissors. grim fairy tales. Right? <laughs> the enchantress screamed as blood, tongue bits, and razor-sharp teeth flew out of her mouth. Her spider form lost its footing, and she fell off the web and down, 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 down to the earth below. Rapunzel and the prince heard a soft crunch when she hit the ground. Then they heard a louder crunch when the jolly green giant came over and accidentally <laughs> stepped on the enchantress's body. <laughs> so this is this is fairyland. They're all like mixed it, together it really with each is. other. Yep. That's great. Well, I guess that's the end of that, said the <laughs> prince. Goodbye, mother, Rapunzel said coldly. The two of them finished their descent. Once on the ground, Rapunzel says, one more thing, and took the scissors and cut off her own very long braid. I won't be needing this anymore, she said. The two climbed onto the prince's horse and rode off into the sunset. They finally got to his parents' house, and when they got there, he introduced them as June and Joseph Hamburger. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> the end. <laughs> so That's what did, great. What did we learn from this overly long fairy tale? Yes, there's always a moral to the story. That's right. You can't be afraid to live your life because of what might happen. You have to go out and live it. Don't let people bully you into being afraid all of the time. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I love most about the story of Rapunzel is it really talks about how fear can really destroy your life. It make can. you uh, Make you uh, um, a recluse. And how um, scissors are your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Always have a pair of scissors. Yes. And, and a can of hairspray. And go out sometimes. Go out and talk to people. Say hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be a little bit social. <laughs> yeah. Unless unless you're in dark woods meeting wolves, then <laughs> not so much. But right. <laughs> I loved it. That's so Yay, great. Yay. Good. I just was came to me at the very end because I didn't have a really good way to wrap it up. And as I was finishing the story, I'm like, wait a minute. The prince has got to be her brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so dark. Awesome. So dark. You're Holly. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you guys have stomached that and go out yeah. for a nice salad today. That's right. You're welcome. Get some Rapunzel or Rampion, as it's called, onto your salad and see what it does for you. Cheers to getting pregnant. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. So the story of Rapunzel begins with a young, uh, yeah, I okay. messed up already, <laughs> and right. we're done, and we're done. Did you do that? Do what, Ollie? Move, move the pillow. Yes. That scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why is that happening? <laughs> um, we, we keep a pillow between us so our mics aren't giving trying, feedback. Trying to absorb the bouncy sounds, and yeah, sometimes on our table. Carol touches the pillow, and then <laughs> touches me, and then I'm like, what's happening? Well, yes, dearie, oh. I am. Why do you ask? Well, you were all... Wait, is that... <laughs> Holly, is that your old woman's voice? Shut up. It's terrible. I know. Okay. <laughs> do you want to read her part? Yes. Okay. Here's the line. Fuck you. No. <laughs> Mind your own business. Oh, my God. This is more work than I wanted to do on this show. It's a short scene. Don't uh, worry about it. All right. Um... The old woman sat quietly for some Actually, time. Actually, if you <laughs> use a turkey baster, Carol? that'll work too. Carol, stop. As the flames die down, do remain undaunted. 
Though all hitchhikers are ghosts, and all dolls are definitely haunted. Hey guys, be sure to follow us on Instagram. Our handle is at Fireside Phantoms. If you have a spooky story you would like to share with us, send it to firesidephantoms at gmail.com and you may hear it on a future episode.